aware of that. So it's not something confined to a certain type of person. Okay, the Arab is not a race, just like the Jew. The Jew is not a race. You have black Jews and white Jews. In fact, the earliest Jews were the dark skin types who became, then you have Semitized people coming into that sect. Then you have, in later years, the European type, which became the dominant type, a later Jew. <coughs> Likewise, among the Arabs or Arabians, you have the fair skin type and you have the darker type. And you find with mixtures with the African type, this became even darker. Into Europe they came and they established four dynasties in the heart of Europe. They established the Umayyad dynasty, the Abbasid dynasty, the Al-Marabi dynasty, and the Al-Mahade dynasty. The Al-Marabi and the Al-Mahade dynasties were dynasties that were almost completely African. Because when the Muslims started fighting among themselves, they would always go back to Africa to regroup. Let me give you an example. The Umayyad set up a dynasty in Europe in 715. And in 750, the dynasty collapsed. Why? Because the Shiites murdered the whole royal family while it was holidaying in Damascus. <laughs> then Abdul Rahman built up an African force, charged, he's a Sunni, charged back into Europe, <coughs> smashed the Abbasid dynasty, and renewed the Umayyad dynasty. And the Umayyad dynasty brought many things into Europe. We are not aware of how profound the influence of the Moors were on European science. In fact, I go so far as to say, were it not for the Moors, it is quite possible that the Industrial Revolution would have been delayed by at least a century. The Moors were the first to take water from the mountains and lead it into the private houses by means of lead pipes. They introduced air conditioning in some of the houses. They actually passed the air over a bank of flowers so that they introduced perfumed air conditioning. <laughs> they were the first to introduce hot and cold water in the houses. They introduced windmills. Nobody had produced windmills knowing that the wind could become a source of power. They introduced mills, paper mills. They introduced the cotton industry into Europe. They introduced the rice industry. They wrote marvelous books on agriculture. You could see a range of them. They lifted, they advanced that agriculture. They introduced irrigation systems. They introduced worm and pinion gears operated hydraulically. They introduced a range of inventions. Optics, the first eyeglasses in the world were introduced by the Moors. They introduced trigonometry, new concepts in trigonometry. They introduced algebra. Algebra, Europeans did not use algebra. It's an Arabic word, algebra. Introduced algorithms. They introduced public markets. They introduced public baths. They introduced public libraries into Europe. There was not a single public library then in Europe. They paved the streets. They put lamps on the streets. You could walk for miles through Cordova by the flash of lamps. There was not a single lighted street then in Europe. These are the superior Aryans <laughs> who invented everything. I am not attacking the European, mind you, because Certain developments occur in certain places at certain times. Europeans have done marvelous things in science, but they have been arrogant enough to assume that they did these things 
because they were superior or they did these things completely out of the blue. If you check it out, you find that when you go to the background of science, you find how much has been lied about. Dr. Finch recently did a study for the book I'm bringing out, Egypt Revisited, in July or August. Did a study at the Edwin Smith Papyrus where a surgeon, Egyptian surgeon, had started to rewrite the book which had been used or developed long before him. He did this in the 18th dynasty, around 1,650 years before Jesus. And he only did one third of the book dealing with the head, the neck, the brain. Do you know what the Africans were doing? They had mapped the insides of the brain. They knew the locus in the brain where auditory information was being processed. They could test the pulse. Europeans, the Greeks, were not able to do this until a thousand years later. Yet, when you read medicine, you hear Herophilus, the Greek, he's the guy who first tested the pulse. And when you read about this test, you see it exactly coming from the Egyptian. Now we have, in all honesty, not only for ourselves, but for all the mankind, we have to put the record straight. Because that is the foundation of these myths of, in, of superiority. If we do not put them straight, the black will always think he did nothing. I've heard them. I heard my brother say, we have to start from scratch, let us face it. <laughs> and we will always have this arrogance and contempt springing from people who have no ground for arrogance and contempt. What we are here to do is not to prove blacks are superior. There are no superior peoples. We are here to establish that equality is no fantasy. It's no liberal cliche or sentiment. It is rooted in hard historical realities. Right. In the world of the Moors came a number of things which are absolutely critical. I spoke to Congress on July the 7th, 1987. I had been called there because a Congressional Oversee Committee was looking, looking into the workings of the Christopher Columbus Quincentenary Commission. This commission had set up its, its base. There were no Native Americans. They employed no Native Americans, no blacks. This was going to be a big commemoration in 1992 with just the Italians and the Spanish getting honor and praise for this so-called discovery. And as I pointed out to them, first of all, Columbus never put foot on American landmass north or south. He only stumbled into the Caribbean. On August, on August the 7th, 1498, three of his ships landed in South America, but he did not come off the ship. He said he had arthritis. <laughs> and he sent message home that South America was an island. Just as earlier on in, in the second voyage, he'd sent word home that Cuba was the continent. <laughs> Just as on the first voyage, he'd sent, he came back to say that he was off the continent of Asia and that the Caribbean was the Gulf of the Ganges. <laughs> this is the man that we're celebrating in 1992 because he discovered us. <laughs> he discovered America, thank God, because that enabled them to drag us out of the bush and bring us here and put us in a good footing. <laughs> Taught us how to dress and how to speak properly. The absurdities, the lies upon which a whole civilization have been built. How can one sleep at night? How can one call a civilization Christian when it is built upon grave immoralities? It is not only us, the black, the white cannot sleep properly if a civilization is built on lies. Therefore, we've not only come here to save ourselves, we've come to save the world. Because to expose these fictions is absolutely vital, as I pointed out. Mr. Columbus 
was using a caravel. Do you know what the caravel comes from? Both Columbus and Vespucci were using.